What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about dinosaurs and how the public has grown to know them thanks to Jurassic Park. The movie that was at the time the highest grossing film ever made and went on to spawn a franchise of sequels, video games, and even scientific studies that helped shape our modern dinosaur world. This is something that's obviously been discussed before in the past, but I don't think people really realize anymore or even understand how much change Jurassic Park brought brought to the representation of dinosaurs as a whole in the 90s in comparison to what came before, let alone how their introduction of other dinosaur species helped bring those animals into public awareness, which is something that I think is extremely cool. So here's just my own personal thoughts on the subject matter and why we all should thank Jurassic Park and yes, even some of the sequels for doing what they did best. So for starters, the original Jurassic Park movie success was always going to bring dinosaurs the general public had never seen before to the forefront of conversation. I can remember Velociraptors at the time being what most people would say was their new favorite dinosaur based off of just that first Jurassic Park. And to the movie's credit, both Dilophosaurus and even Gallimimus were also popularized in 1993. Especially Dilophosaurus, with most people even to this day designing it with the frilled lizard-like, you know, design and the ability to spit venom. Now, while I'm sure some people would love to chime in immediately saying that this led to misinformation about dinosaurs and Jurassic Park irrevocably destroyed the public's viewpoint of the creature, don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. But for now, I need to address the most obvious elephant in the room. Jurassic Park is the first big budget Hollywood blockbuster to popularize the idea that dinosaurs were related to birds. I would say that it was the first movie in general, but the return of Godzilla beat it nine years earlier in 1984, and it's actually a part of the plot. I'm sure most of you probably had no idea about that, but anyways, Jurassic Park was the movie that really pushed for that in its plot, and it wound up revolutionizing the way the public looked at the animals by stating that they weren't cold-blooded or much like reptiles at all. It did this while also playing with the idea of having reptilian-like features for its dinosaurs, by the way. Specifically, the Velociraptors at one point in time were actually going to flick out their tongues in a way similar to Komodo dragons or snakes, which is something that I think actually looks extremely cool. Nevertheless, they did not do that, and without Jurassic Park, most of the general public would have no idea about any of this. And that isn't even factoring in the animal's radical redesigns. To make things as simply as I possibly can, Jurassic Park is also the first movie to actually depict theropod dinosaurs as not walking in an upright, old-school position. And it gave animals like Velociraptor and T-Rex a proper horizontal look that really changed the slow, tail-dragging view people had of the animals for nearly a century. I want you guys to keep that in mind, by the way. While it's been just now 30 years since the release of the first Jurassic Park movie, that film in 1993 changed things that had been locked in public consciousness for dinosaurs, like Tyrannosaurus Rex, for over a hundred years. No joke, this was the biggest leap I think people had for dinosaurs ever, and it literally happened overnight thanks to that movie. Jurassic Park is also coincidentally the movie to bring forward the idea of feathers being a possibility for dinosaurs, due in no small part to the bird relation from the film, but also due to the sequel book released in 1995, actually showing downy feathers on the baby tyrannosaurs on Isla Sorna. I recently did a video on this. There was a lot of attention on the sequel to Jurassic Park. People wanted it, they wanted to know what it was about, all eyes were on it, and because everyone was so excited from the first movie, that book by Michael Crichton was the first time a lot of people were were actually reading into what it would be like in a real life living animal. And while this wouldn't become a thing in the films until the sixth movie, full on, it was the Lost World book that really sparked the idea in people's minds ever so slightly in the 90s. Not to mention other Jurassic material like the quills and the raptors in Jurassic Park 3, and other material being chock full of feathers later on. Speaking of the sequels, without the follow-ups to Jurassic Park, we probably would have very different popularized dinosaurs instead of what people have become fans of today. What if Jurassic Park 
didn't have any sequels. Think about that for a second. That second book helped usher in wide attention to Carnotaurus, and the second movie made a big deal out of Compsognathus, which nobody really talked about before. It started showing up everywhere afterwards, Dino Crisis being one in particular to follow in the Lost World's footsteps. It's also hard not to mention the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3 becoming a household name, because if you're like me and grew up reading about dinosaurs as a kid, you'll remember we had a very different view of the animal before 2001. The movie's depiction being way closer to anything we had at all at the time, and that includes in other Jurassic material, but by that point in time, the popularity of Jurassic Park was waning in favor of other things that had become, you know, more interesting. Dinosaur media as a whole had begun to die with things like Dino Crisis 3 and the Sci-Fi Channel kind of stealing its thunder. There was also a never-ending string of Land Before Time sequels that probably didn't help at all. In the end, it was kind of just overexposure that killed the dinosaur craze of the 90s and the early 2000s. And by that time, like 0203, nobody really cared anymore. Still, with that being said, the depiction of the animals in 1993 totally changed the way the public viewed the dinosaurs forever. And like I said earlier, it reset the look of the animals that had been the dominant viewpoint for around 100 years in paleontology when it came to the general public. While people like Robert Backer and John Ostrom were making landmark findings and discoveries in the creatures, none of that became a popular consensus reality until Jurassic Park in the 90s. And that's just kind of one of the things dinosaur fans have to thank that movie for. Still, you may be saying to yourself things like, well, it doesn't really matter because Jurassic Park ruined the way people view Velociraptor or Dilophosaurus or even Carnotaurus because it could camouflage in the book. I've done long videos before in the past breaking down the fact that Michael Crichton researched John Ostrom's studies on Deinonychus antiropus before writing Jurassic Park, and even that he used the name Gregory S. Paul had for the animal, which was literally Velociraptor antiropus. Ropus. That's a fact, by the way, look it up, when he was writing the book and the screenplay for the first movie, but it's not really what I think interests people. Some of you advanced fans already know that. Just know that when you hear people say things like, Velociraptors in Jurassic Park are supposed to be the size of turkeys, they're leaving out a lot of convenient information from that conversation there. But no, when it comes to things like Tyrannosaur eyesight, Dilophosaurus size, or even the other abilities these creatures have, well then, that's where I think people love to poke at Jurassic Park the most and that they want to burn the IP on in general. And to be fair, this was never an accurate representation of the dinosaurs to begin with at all, so there is something to glean from that. But when it comes to something like the Dilophosaurus in particular, I do want to remind people of one small thing that shouldn't have to be said, but maybe it is best to reiterate before moving on. To make this really simple, Jurassic Park is a cautionary tale about geneticists taking blood that was sucked from mosquitoes millions of years ago and locked in fossilized amber in order to blend it together with frog DNA and create a dinosaur theme park. The story has always been against humans going balls to the wall with new science solely because they just have unlocked the ability to do it and calling out the scientific hubris of thinking that mankind is untouchable to its creation. It's always been a warning of what happens when you mess with mother nature and produce something unnatural akin to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. The dinosaurs were always given weird and unique abilities like breeding despite all being bred female to begin with because it shows that mankind cannot control them. They also aren't necessarily 100% pure-blooded dinosaurs to begin with, at least not until Jurassic World Dominion, so in 1993 they could literally be whatever they wanted to be. Now I do have a big problem with the whole Cretaceous flashback scene in JP6, but to put things simply, Jurassic Park isn't really responsible for any of that. The first Jurassic Park, and to be honest with you, neither is JP2, 3, 4, or JP5 for that matter. So just to recap, you know, before before we go on, in 1993, Jurassic Park comes out and becomes the biggest movie ever made. It popularized the following things to audiences. The fact that dinosaurs were more closely related to birds than we previously thought. The new body designs and positions of the theropods, which dropped the tail dragging upright idea. The idea that the animals had the capability of not only being warm blooded, but even fast at times. And also the idea that the dinosaurs weren't stupid lumbering idiotic beasts with stuff like in intelligence being a major theme for the raptors. Now, because of what Jurassic Park had done, ironically, several newer dinosaur documentaries 
literally started to stand on the shoulders of the genius that the Jurassic movie ushered in. And we got things like walking with dinosaurs and when dinosaurs roamed America only due to the bankability of dinosaurs being all over the place once Jurassic Park was a hit. Seriously, those things would not be the way they are or probably even exist today had it not been for the first Jurassic Park movie, let alone a film like Disney's Dinosaur either, which at the time we were like, oh, Disney's making a Jurassic Park, you know? That was the whole point of why everyone was excited to see it. Now fast forward 30 years, just 30 years, and Jurassic Park is still to this day the single thing that changed the public's outlook on dinosaurs the most in the entire history of probably anything ever. Before that movie, I would probably say Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Lost World film from 1925 would have been the thing to popularize the animals in the public the most before it, but only because it came out before King Kong in 1933. Once you look at the way the dinosaurs looked in the 1925 film, you honestly, you don't have much change at all until Jurassic Park came out. Then you have this massive scientific leap that has never been equaled at all. Even with newer things like Prehistoric Planet showcasing lips, more accurate skeletal positioning and vocalizations and stuff like that, it hasn't taken a leap anywhere near as gigantic as Jurassic Park. Do not fool yourselves, guys. Speaking of which, we haven't even gotten into the behaviors of the animals either, with creatures like Tyrannosaurus being showcased as an ambush predator, raptors hunting in packs, and even things like the animals raising their young being a big point of later Jurassic Park entries. If you go back to literally any other dinosaur movie before Jurassic Park, you would only see the animals dragging their tails and chasing after things more often than not. That's not to say that every depiction of dinosaurs before Jurassic Park wasn't fine in its own right, and look, I'll I'll go ahead and say that for me, 100 million BC, the Valley of Guanji, and importantly when dinosaurs ruled the earth, which is actually referenced in Jurassic Park, those are all classics in their own right. But if Jurassic Park had never come out in 1993, what do you honestly think the general public would think about dinosaurs? Would they ever get updated in such a gigantic leap as what we saw overnight? Or would they still remain the way things were back, you know, shortly before that movie. Even Carnosaur that came out in 1993 still had an upright moving Tyrannosaurus Rex, guys. This is like, you can't really diss Jurassic and how much of a big move it was. In short, 30 years ago, that first movie revolutionized the way everyone sees these animals in such a drastic and groundbreaking fashion that I don't really think and anything else will ever really be able to do that again until several more decades have passed. And even then, I think it's a stretch because the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park are still relatively passable today in comparison to literally everything that came before them. Literally everything. And honestly, they look extremely close to many newer scientific depictions of the animals in dinosaur media. I mean, think about it. In 1905, this was a T-Rex. And in the 1960s, this was a T-Rex. In 1985, this was a T-Rex. Still looks kind of cool. And then this is what we got in Jurassic Park. No matter what sort of updates or more accurate representations we have today, you're not going to be able to fool anybody by saying that it's an even more dramatic or drastic change. And to be honest, I think people need to thank Jurassic Park for that. Because if it hadn't been for that film, we could be living in a world where that happened way later. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.